Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Fernanda Moura, your literature teacher at Books and Culture. If you don't know me yet, or if you don't know Books and Culture yet, uh, well, nice meeting you. I'm Fernanda Moura, I have a PhD in Literary Studies, and Books and Culture is the online platform where I offer online literature courses and workshops. So if you want to know more about what is there for you, book lover, check out the website booksandculture.club. Now we are starting a new cycle at Books and Culture. This cycle is all about Charlotte Bronte. So she is the author we'll be studying together in the upcoming weeks. So before I give you an introduction to this author's life and career, I would like to bring your attention to two literary events that will take place at Books and Culture very soon and all about Charlotte Bronte. The first one is the guided reading sessions of the professor, her first written completed novel, but the last to be published. It was in fact published posthumously. Uh, so we'll read this book together live here on YouTube in these uh, uh, sessions that I call guided reading sessions, because in, uh, we'll read the book together. You can check out the chapters schedule on our Instagram books and culture. Um, we'll read together and I will stop every now and then to give you, uh, to talk about my insights about what is going on in the novel, to give you extra contextual information. I always say at Books and Culture that it's extremely important to read literature in context for a meaningful and rich reading experience. So that's what we'll do together every Thursday, starting the 8th of February at 1 p.m. Central European time live here on YouTube, so subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you will know when I am live for each new session. So that's one. And the second literary event concerning Charlotte Bronte at Books and Culture is for a small group of students. We'll get together live via Zoom to discuss uh, Charlotte Bronte's masterpiece, Jane Eyre, one of the classics of English literature and of Victorian literature. So in four meetings, we'll dig deep into this novel. We'll have very meaningful conversations. We can talk about your reading experiences. And as always, I will give you extra contextual information for a very rich experience. There's a lot to explore in this novel, a lot of themes, a lot of interesting use of language. So we'll do that together. And if you uh, join us in this course, I will also offer you a recorded lecture in which I talk about this seminal work uh, by uh, Susan Gubar and Sandra Gilbert, the very famous book, The Mad Woman in the Attic, The Woman Writer in the 19th Century Literary Imagination. You may have heard of this book before. It's huge. It was published in 1979, so it's been a while, but it's still relevant. And the title, The Mad Woman in the Attic, refers to a character in Jane Eyre. I'm not going to talk to you about that just yet. I'll talk about it in the lecture, so you also get access to this uh, extra, very rich material if you join us in the reading uh, and discussion group of Jane Eyre. All right, so I thought I'd kick off uh, this cycle at Books and Culture by giving you an overview of the life of Charlotte Bronte. So everyone knows that uh, Charlotte had two sisters, right? Also very uh, important literary figures, Emily Bronte, the author of Wuthering Heights, and Anne Bronte, the author of The Tenant of Whitefell Hall and uh, Agnes Grey. So these are the well-known Bronte sisters, but what a lot of people do not know is that they had other two sisters, older ones, um, Maria and Elizabeth. And Maria and Elizabeth were sent to Cowan Bridge School at the ages of 11 and 10. So they were sent away from home to this boarding school where they suffered hunger, cold, deprivation, terrible, terrible conditions. They caught tuberculosis and ended up 
dying within weeks of having returned home. So their parents were her par their parents were called, but it was too late. The girls unfortunately died because of the tuberculosis that they caught while at school. And the girls died one right after the other, and they were only 11 and 10 years old. Uh, Charlotte and Emily were also at this boarding school, but after the death of their sisters, they were sent immediately home. Um, can you imagine if they had stayed, what could have happened? Maybe we would not have had access to those beautiful works written by them, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights, for example. So that, of course, was a tragic event in their lives, losing their older sisters. So the time that Charlotte spent there in this boarding school, the terrible conditions that she and the other girls experienced. So all this childhood memory served as inspiration uh, for Charlotte to create Lowood in Jane Eyre. So you can see that death was present in the girl's life from a very early age. In addition to that, in addition to the death of their older siblings, their mother, Maria, had died of cancer in um, 1821, so when Charlotte was only five years old. Uh, also about the Bronte family, the girls had a brother, Patrick Branwell, perhaps you've heard of him. Um, he was born after Charlotte, after Charlotte and before Emily. Um, he also tried writing poetry, just like the girls. He also gave a shot at being an artist, a painter, but without success. All these failures in life led him to an addiction to opium and to an early death. He um, ended up dying at 31 years of age. Now, for Charlotte, the situation was even worse because she also lost both her beloved sisters. Emily and Anne died um, very quickly and at a very early age, right after they started publishing. Uh, Emily died of consumption on the 19th of December, 1848. And Charlotte barely had time to get over um, Emily's death when Anne got ill as well. And she died of the same illness five months later. Can you imagine? So Emily was 30 years old and Anne was 29. So in the end, Charlotte was the only surviving of the six Bronte children. Now you may be wondering, why was there so much death uh, going on, right? Uh, why were so many people dying and so many young and healthy people dying at Haworth, the village where the Brontes lived? In fact, 40% of the children died before the age of six in that region at the time, and life expectancy was 25.8 years old. So the situation was crucial, and a health inspector was called from London to investigate the health situation in Haworth, and he found out something quite interesting and terrible. He found out that the main source of drinking water in the village ran from the cemetery. So it brought with it a lot of diseases. And that's why people would get sick very quickly, one after the other. And you can even read the whole health report of Haworth um, if you're interested <laughs> online. Now let's switch to something more positive. Let's talk about Charlotte Bronte's writing career. So she began writing poetry just as her sisters. In fact, their first publication was a joint publication, um, namely Poems by Kerr, Ellis and Acton Bell, published in 1846. So a collection of poems written by the three girls. And they chose to use male pseudonyms. So they did not sign the work using their real names, but male pseudonyms. So Kerr Bell was in fact Charlotte Bronte. So they kept their their uh, initials. Um, Alice Bell was Emily uh, Bronte and Acton Bell was Anne Bronte. Now, why do you think they did that? Why would they use male pseudonyms instead of signing with their own names? Well, that was something, was a, um, was a common practice in uh, the literary market in the 1850s, uh, the first half of the 19th century, let's say. Um, 
Unfortunately, women writers were not taken as seriously as male writers. That's why many um, published anonymously. Um, think of Anne Radcliffe, for example, or even uh, Jane Austen, although she published anonymously, but it's, um, it was signed by a lady, so it was uh, known from the beginning that it was written by a woman. Um, other women writers decided to use the strategy of using a male pseudonym, such as George Eliot, for instance, the pseudonym of um, Marianne Evans. So because the girls wanted their poetry to get real and serious critical attention, they decided to do that. However, the publication was a commercial failure and only they say that only two copies of the book were sold. However, the girls did not give up, fortunately, and their achievements in prose were much more successful. So uh, Charlotte published Jane Eyre in October 1847, so a year after the publication of the poetry collection. And in the same year, but with a different publisher, uh, Emily's Wuthery Heights and Anne's Agnes Grey were published in a single volume in December to capitalize on the success of Jane Eyre. Following the success of Charlotte's first novel, she published more. Um, so Shirley followed, published in 1849, and Villette in 1853. These are works that explore themes of social class and the struggles of women in the 19th century. That Those are themes that span across all her novels. Um, in 1854, after the death of her sisters, Charlotte married Arthur Bell Nichols, who was one of her father's curate. Um, the marriage, however, was short-lived because Charlotte died the next year, 1855, at the age of 38 due to complications of her pregnancy. So there's a lot of tragedy in the Brontes' lives, right? Um, their real lives would make out a um, fine and very interesting to read novel. Um, but it is their novels that we will we'll explore at Books and Culture. In fact, we've read together Wuthering Heights, uh, the second literary workshop of 2023 was reading with Three Heights. We had a great time talking about Emily Bronte, some of her poetry and digging deep into with Three Heights. And now in 2024, we're going to talk about Charlotte Bronte. I hope you've enjoyed this introductory uh, video about her life um, and a little bit about her writing career. And we'll get together here live on YouTube to read and discuss her um, posthumously published novel, The Professor, which uh, explores, um, kind of mirrors uh, Charlotte's experience as a teacher in Brussels in 1842. Um, and we'll get together in a small group uh, on Zoom to discuss together and talk about our reading experiences. Um, we'll about Jane Eyre, her masterpiece. So I hope to welcome you to both of these literary events. And if you have any requests about what you would like to study at Books and Culture, leave a comment here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the available courses at booksandculture.club. I'll see you soon. And as always, I wish you a magical literary journey.